Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Sumit and I am here with my new video in Salesforce REST API integration. And the topic for today's video is that how can we make a REST request from .NET to Salesforce? Actually, recently we got a requirement from one of our clients and they would like to integrate their Visual Studio .NET with Salesforce and they would like to make a REST request. So therefore I decided that why don't, why should I not share with this uh, solution with you, which I configured for my client. I hope this will help for you. So those who have not subscribed my YouTube channel, please press the subscribe, subscribe the YouTube channel so that you will get the latest update. And if you haven't pressed the bell icon, just hit the bell icon so that you will just get notification whenever I come with a new so let's see how can we make a REST request from .NET to Salesforce. So first of all, for this functionality, you will be requiring two things. First, we require a Salesforce account, developer's account, which we have already got. And number two, we need to download and install Visual Studio .NET. So you can visit, you can download and install Visual Studio 2019 community. I'm using same. So let's have a look how to do that. So in order to set up a connectivity with Salesforce, so the first of all, what we have to do, we need to log in into our Salesforce account. And uh, once we log in into Salesforce account, we need to set up the connected app. So let me show you how can we do that. So first of all, let me log in into my Salesforce. So that's my username and my password. So what I have done, I've I've created a connected app. So let me show you how to create a connected app. Those who are already familiar with how to set up a connected app, they can skip this part and move directly to the development part. Those who are new to this integration, so I would suggest them to go through this video from the beginning so that they would be knowing how to create a connected app. So let's see how to create a connected app quickly. So in order to create a connected app, you need to click on new connected app. And I'll give this name as AI Tech One REST app. Contact email, I will be going to put my mail ID. So for REST connectivity, we'll be using OAuth setting. And for OAuth setting, I'll say enable OAuth setting, HTTPS localhost.com. And I will be giving full permission, full access to REST API request. Click on scroll down, click on save, continue, and your connected app is registered successfully. So once your connected app is registered successfully, we require the consumer key and consumer secret. So these two information will be required. So what we'll do is I'll suggest you to make a note of this. So I'll just say username. So always use to store the username, password, client ID, and client secret so that we can easily copy paste it. So that's my consumer key. So consumer key is our client ID and consumer secret is our client secret. So my password is admin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and my username. So I'll get to my username, user. And I'll just get to user and this is my user. This will be my user. Now, along with password, we require security token also because we are trying to integrate external third party application or external application with Salesforce. So security, security token will be very much required. So in order to how to reset security token or how to get security token, let's have a look. So I just click on this option, view profile settings. And in my personal settings, I click on reset my security token. Click on reset security token. So it will send a security token on registered mail ID. So I'll just quickly go and check my mailbox. So I might have received the security token. And I'll just copy that security token from there and paste it in notepad. So now we are ready with all the information we have. So I got my security token and that's my security. So this is the complete 
so don't try to use these information because after this video i will be going to remove this uh, application and uh, i will be going to reset my security token so you won't be able to use the same credentials to connect you have to use your own credentials so our first part of this video is done where we have successfully extracted the details from the salesforce now we'll switch to visual studio so for a quick to make this video short what i have done i have already get my code ready in my visual studio but i'll just explain you the code so that you can we won't waste time in writing the code from line by line it will take long time so therefore what we have to do is we need to create a console application in visual studio so i have created a console application so those who are new to this let me tell you how to do that so i'll just open visual studio and in this visual studio i'm going to create a new project and in this new project i select so as you can see i'm using c sharp dotnet language and console application and click on next add the project name and the location where we would like to store your project and click on next and you and once you click on create your project will be ready so once the console application is ready we have to create one so once your project is ready you will get the program.cs file that is the default file but in order to do in order to establish a connectivity between dotnet and salesforce we need to do some additional effort and what that so the first thing i created an app config file and in this app config file what i have done uh, as soon as you create an app config file you will get these two line line number 1 line 2 and line the last two lines you will be getting these last line then we have to add this much code and here we have to create the uh, the variables the username this is our username password is okay token my token is changed so let me change my token so my token is this is a token security token so i just change the security token here client id so this is a client id that's why i make a note in my notepad so that we can easily get the values that's the client id and client secret this is the client secret so we just pass on the values in our app dot config and now from this app config we'll be going to get the get the values in our salesforce client dot cs then what i have done i created a new class here new uh, c sharp class so i just created a new class new class and in this class first of all i included the headers http.net .net or http .net or http.header system.net and newton newton soft.json and how can we get this newton soft.json right click manage new get packages and in manage new get packages you can you can search for newton soft newton soft.json so in my case i have already installed but in your case you will be doing it very first time so you have to search it out and install it because why we need this package so this package will be required because the salesforce the response will be getting from salesforce or the uh, the so the communication between the dotnet and salesforce will always be in a json format so therefore in order to deserialize the json or to understand the json or to read the json will be using json format json file then i created the variable login endpoint because if you remember in my previous video where i have explained how to use the rest integration using postman there we have created the rest solution and we use this url so we have to set this url as a login endpoint login.salesforce.com/services/o2token then api endpoint is slash service slash data version 51.0 and i created the variables username password token client id client secret and respectively get and set attributes then i created the constructor and in this constructor i set the protocol that what the security protocol just to make sure the connectivity will be secure the connection will be secure then i create a login function and this login function will be going to test the login so i just create a json response and uh, where client is equal to http client just to make sure that the request is uh, will be using the http client environment and we define our request we create a request variable to encode the contents because we'll be going to uh, we will be going to pass these information along with this url along with this login endpoint and in order to connectivity what i have done i just use the pretty print 
for as a header i just i just set the header as pretty print and i just make a post request see this post async okay this post async will make a post client dot post async will be making a post request to salesforce using login endpoint and request so login endpoint and request is these information and the result will get returned and that result will store into response and then what i have done because the response is in uh, json format so we converted this into as a result read async as result so we can print out the complete view then what we have done we deserialize the json because we from that from that particular string from that from that particular response we will be will be looking for uh, access token and instance url so we extracted the access token and instance url and stored into these two variables both token and instance url respectively and these variables we have already created as a global variable uh, before uh, just after the class before the constructor so that's the login function at the same time what i have done i have created a new function as a query function which takes one input as a soql query and in this soql query i created a query where we use instance url which we retrieve from the previous function api endpoint api endpoint is this the service slash date so it will it will create a complete query for us and finally we pass a query sokal so this sokal query this query will be getting from our program.ts function means we'll be going to call this function query function and pass a soql query we can query on we can run query on we, uh, we can run query on any object then uh, we'll be getting a request http request message and as you can see here i'm making a get request because i just wanted to read the information i just want to read the data so read request and uh, along with uh, along with the request we need to add some authorization bearer or oath token because without this oath token the salesforce will not authorize the request so i use this oath token and the application json if you want to pass some details the response will be in a json format and pretty print and will get the res result and uh, and store the result into response and then it is going to return the response in a string format you, you can see the response is in a string so this is what we have configured in our salesforce client which is responsible to establish a connectivity with the salesforce and run a query using get method then program.cs what we have done first of all i just uh, pass on the information i just pass the username password token and client id client secret to these variables so i just assign these information to these variables and in order to do this i'll use this new salesforce client and we'll passing these variables then in main function i create an instance of this client i create an instance of this create client this one you can see this is an instance of the salesforce client we'll be inheriting this create client and then i pass create client dot login in order to test the login connectivity first of all to establish a connection and then to we just pass a query as you can see select name from account so client dot query this client dot query will be going to call this query function and that query will pass you SQL query and it will execute and return the results. So the results will print at once. So that's the complete program. Now let's test this code. So in order to test this code, I click on run. So what it will do? First of all, it will be going to establish a connectivity with Salesforce using REST. It will extract that. It will uh, it will check the authenticity first. The uh, the authorization will be done, and then the query function will get invoked. And once the function get invoked. will be going to get the output so as you can see it is running on it takes some time to connect and you can see the connectivity has done the request has been made successfully you can see the response access token this is the same response we used to get when we make a post request from postman if you have tested a postman so the same kind of url we used to get let me copy this and show you this see that's the same information access token we get access token we get uh, instance url instance url and we get id we get token type issued at signature so these are the same informations we used to get and uh, then uh, i just make a query request so it retrieve all 1008 records see the total size is 1008 records so will be will be retrieving record the account name only account name is i mean we just retrieve the account name now this information is coming in a json format 
so we have an op we have an option to customize this so now we can take it for we can take it to next level and we can only display the account name so again we have to deserialize this string and display the account name from so we have to uh, read this json we have to deserialize this json and display the name from this json so that's all will we make a rest request from dotnet to salesforce and uh, so i hope you like this video so if you like this video don't forget to press the like button you can post your comment in comment box if you require any customized training on salesforce you can con contact with us on uh, the given numbers or you can drop an email on support at the rate aitech1.com you can visit our website for more updates that's all for the day thank you everyone thanks for watching the video have a nice day goodbye